Welcome to Dublin, the city that boasts hundreds of bands, thousands of songs and millions of stories. My name is Emma O'Reilly. I'm a musician and I live, work and gig in Dublin City. Today, we're going to take a musical journey around the city centre. We'll see some well-known spots and maybe uncover a few well-kept secrets along the way. Like I said, Dublin is the home to hundreds of established and emerging artists. The city is literally buzzing with music from internationally known acts like U2, Van Morrison, Sinead O'Connor, Glenn Hansard, to more recently formed groups like Codeline, The Script and artists like Imelda May. Make sure you check out our Spotify list to hear some of these great Irish artists. There are music festivals and gigs going on in Dublin all year round and most international acts stop here when they're touring. We've got you sorted for listings on www.visitdublin.com so make sure you get to see some local bands as well as some bigger names while you're here. Today we're going to start at St Stephen's Green. We're going to head down Grafton Street, Dublin's main shopping thoroughfare, and from there we'll take you to Temple Bar. Feel free to stop and start the iWalk track whenever you like if you find something along the way that catches your eyes or your ears. Stop 1, St Stephen's Green. We'll start at the main entrance to St Stephen's Green, facing Grafton Street and St Stephen's Green Shopping Centre. Standing in front of the Fusilier Arch, you've got a view along Grafton Street straight ahead and on the left you've got the St Stephen's Green Shopping Centre. So this shopping centre that you're looking at used to be a car park and that car park hosted a market called the Dandelion Market and it was over there in 1979 that you 2 famously played 8 gigs that practically everybody in Dublin claims to have seen. There's not much left of the original site but Sinnott's Bar on South King Street survived that's the street running along the right-hand side of the centre just after the entrance. The Gaiety Theatre is on that street too. If you're into musicals, operas or big shows, you should check it out. It's been there since 1871 and it's hosted tons of world-famous acts from Nick Cave to Luciano Pavarotti. In just a minute, we're going to cross the road at the lights in front of you and take a wander down Grafton Street. But let me tell you a few things about it first. This is a pretty famous spot for busking in Ireland and many Irish acts have paid their dues right here. You might have heard of the late Patrick Kavanagh, one of Ireland's most celebrated poets. Well, he wrote a ballad called Raglan Road that was made famous by Irish legend Luke Kelly. Grafton Street gets a mention in it. On Grafton Street in November, we tripped lightly along the ledge. Of course, you'll recognise the area from the film Once, which had a scene where Glenn Hansard was trying to make a few quid busking himself. The film landed him an Academy Award for Best Song with Falling Slowly. In fact, this is where Glenn started, musically speaking. He used to busk here all the time, as did Paddy Casey, Damien Rice, Rodrigo y Gabriela, Keela and the Hothouse Flowers. You never know who you'll see here. Over the years, members of U2, the Dubners and Frank Black of the Pixies have delighted passing crowds and occasionally irritated the authorities with their music. As you head down in that direction on your right, upstairs at number 44, you'll pass Captain America's. This cookhouse and bar is a pretty impressive collection of rock memorabilia that is definitely worth checking out. And the cocktails are pretty good too. And they've been known to do karaoke nights, so consider yourself warned. Now head over there and take it all in. Our next stop will be Harry Street, your second left as you head down Grafton Street, where we'll see a tribute to one of Ireland's most loved musicians. Stop two, Phil Linnett statue, Harry Street. Now we're on Harry Street, facing Bruxelles Bar. In front of Bruxelles Bar, you'll see a bronze statue of the famous Phil Linnet. Locals call him Philo, and he was the frontman, bass player, and main songwriter for Thin Lizzy. Their hits included The Boys Are Back In Town, Whiskey In The Jar, Waiting For An Alibi, and Jailbreak. After winning a competition, sculptor Paul Daly was commissioned to work on the statue. The bronze was cast by Leo Higgins, and the plinth was hand-carved by sculptor Tom Glendon. Dubliners have a tendency to nickname local landmarks and Phil here is lovingly referred to as the ace with the bass. This statue was officially unveiled in 2005. Phil died in 1986 when he was only 36, but the music he made is still very well loved and a staple for performers and radio stations all over the country. As for Bruxelles, if you're here on a Wednesday, check out the Zodiac sessions downstairs to hear some original music by local talent. Stop three, Bewley's Cafe. Grafton Street. The next stop is Bewley's Cafe. Keep heading down Grafton Street and it'll be on your left. Originally, this building was White's Academy and the Duke of Wellington and Irish patriot Robert Emmett are amongst its most famous pupils. In 1927, the Bewley family opened at this premises. If you check out the somewhat exotic design of the building, you can tell they were inspired by the Viennese and Parisian cafes. 
Locals like James Joyce, Samuel Beckett, Sean O'Casey and the aforementioned Patrick Kavanagh must have been inspired too because they loved spending time here. Bewley's appeal didn't stop at writers though. It used to be a favourite haunt of the Boomtown Rats who wrote their UK number one hit Rat Trap on the premises. Now the Rats are pretty successful. They were the first Irish band to get two number one hits on the UK charts. The second hit was a little song called I Don't Like Mondays. Their frontman, singer and songwriter Bob Geldof would later become famous for putting the Live Aid and Feed the World campaigns together. Stop 4. The Molly Malone Statue Walk all the way down Grafton Street, cross the road and stop at the Molly Malone Statue. This statue was inspired by a song based on a fictional character called Molly Malone. The song is the sad story of a fishmonger who died of a fever and it's done in an old music hall style that was popular in the 1800s. It's one of those songs that you seem to have emblazoned on your skull if you grow up here and it is sung at football stadiums, concerts, classrooms, bars and just about anywhere you can think of. The locals refer to her as the tart with the cart or the dish with the fish or the dolly with the trolley and sometimes the flirt with the skirt. You get the idea. The first published version of the song dates to 1883, and since then it has been covered by the likes of U2 and Sinead O'Connor, but probably most famously by legendary folk band The Dubliners. Rock fans might remember them from their collaboration with The Pogues, The Irish Rover. From where you stand, Trinity College is just behind Molly. The music department in there is the only department that hasn't moved out of the front square building. You'll see the department windows on the right-hand side of the main entrance as you pass it on your way to the next stop. To get to our next stop, you'll walk down the road you're on, keeping Trinity on your right. The road will curve around the left and you'll find yourself on Dame Street. Continue down Dame Street until you see the Mercantile Pub and Hotel on the left, then cross over onto the right-hand side of the road at the next set of traffic lights. Slightly to the right, you'll see Temple Lane South. Head down there until you come to the point where the street meets Cecilia Street and we'll continue. Stop 5. The Wall of Fame. The corner of Temple Lane South and Cecilia Street in Temple Bar. Welcome to the Temple Bar area. So this is an important spot for music now, but it used to be a Docklands area full of warehouses and rundown buildings. It was going to be turned into a massive transportation centre in the 1980s, but a local lobby stepped in and stopped it. Instead, Temple Bar Properties was set up to develop it, and now, as you can see, it's full of shops, pubs, cafes, eateries, galleries, and most importantly, music. In January every year, there's a traditional music festival here, and there are venues, bands, and buskers around every corner. Our first stop in Temple Bar is the Wall of Fame, on the side of the Button Factory, just to your left. Formerly the Temple Bar Music Centre, it's a well-known venue, studio, college and rehearsal space for bands. Take some time to check out the photos in the Wall of Fame. You'll notice many of the people we've already mentioned up there. Also, at the top in the middle, you'll see a picture of Rory Gallagher, another Irish legend that we'll talk about shortly. On your right on Cecilia Street is Clada Records. STS Studios used to be located above the shop and this was where you 2 recorded various sessions with engineer and producer Paul Barrett. Clada have a great collection of folk and traditional music, and in fact, there used to be a host of great second-hand music shops in the area, but the advent of digital downloading impacted heavily on them. But if second-hand and independent stores are your thing, never fear, because Dublin will provide. We've got loads of great independent record stores in the city, and many of them are really near to where you're standing right now. Head back up Temple Lane South, taking the right onto Curved Lane past the Button Factory. Go through the small archway ahead and down the steps onto Meeting House Square. This area hosts a great food market on Saturdays and also transforms into an outdoor cinema and venue. Veer right through the square and you'll exit the square past the National Photographic Archive. And now if you look up, you'll see a bronze guitar. Stop 6. Rory Gallagher Corner. Meeting House Square, Temple Bar. If you know anything about Rory Gallagher, you know why he gets an area of the city named after him. Rory was born in Ballyshannon, County Donegal, and grew up in Cork, but toured regularly around the world, selling over 30 million albums in the process. Rory learned his trade with the show bands, moving on to powerhouse trio Taste, which set him up for a long and successful solo career on top of the music he made with the band. His blend of blues and rock and style of playing were uniquely his and his live performances were full of energy and charisma. And if you haven't already, I would strongly recommend you check out his music. 
Legend has it that he bought the first ever Fender Stratocaster electric guitar in Ireland in 1961 and played it throughout his career. This bronze sculpture is a replica of that same customised, well-worn guitar complete with scratches and marks. If you want to see a beautiful replica of the guitar up close, call into Music Maker on Exchequer Street. It's there in the guitar department. Rory passed away in 1995, aged just 47. You're now on Temple Bar Street. Face away from the guitar, walk down the street, taking the left onto East Essex Street. You'll find yourself outside the Project Arts Centre, which has played a key role in the Irish arts scene. Many actors and artists like you two have exhibited or performed there. And speaking of you two, it's a bit difficult not to in their hometown. Opposite to you right now is the rear entrance to the five-star Clarence Hotel, which is owned by none other than Bono and the Edge. To get to our last stop, turn right and walk back along Temple Bar, passing the Rory Gallagher corner, where you were just a moment ago until you reach Temple Bar Square. Stop. Breathe it in. Note the pubs here. They'll be good places to hear traditional music later. Note the square. It's a good spot for buskers and markets. And another thing to flag for later. If you were to continue walking straight past the square, you'd find yourself on Fleet Street. And if you were to continue down that street, you'd find the Irish edition of the Hard Rock Cafe. As you can imagine, that's also home to a load of rock memorabilia and it hosts gigs too. But for the moment, take the next left after the Keys pub and continue on through the Merchant Arch. Inside the arch, you'll see a plaque commemorating our hero from earlier, Phil Linnet. Stop number seven, the Merchant's Arch and the Halfpenny Bridge. Now look through the arch and walk through it onto the Keys. This is the Halfpenny Bridge. This is one of the oldest cast iron bridges in the world. For a stint of about 100 years from 1816, there was a toll of half a penny to cross the bridge, hence its name. Rock fans might know it from the opening scenes of Phil in its video from his classic song about Dublin, Old Town. You'll also see Grafton Street in that video too. If you don't know it, you should probably check it out on YouTube and see how much Dublin has changed since this video was released in 1982. There are plenty of famous rock faces that have posed on the bridge over the years, apart from Philo, including Riverdance and, surprise surprise, U2. I hope you've enjoyed the rock and stroll I walk. While you're here, I really recommend taking the time to see some local venues and hear some local bands. Most of the best venues in the city are less than a 15 minute walk maximum from where you currently stand. Don't forget to check out our Spotify playlist to hear some great Irish acts. You can find us on iTunes if you want to download more iWalk podcasts. You can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Visit Dublin to keep up to date with the latest news and information. I'm Emma O'Reilly. Thanks for walking with me and have a fantastic stay here in Dublin.